Logan, we saw Brad Compass hit that homer in the fourth inning. Do you, do you think that kind of energized your offense a bit? Oh, for sure. You know, it gave us a little bit of a cushion, let us play a little bit more loose. We weren't hitting to get to not get out. We were hitting to hit at that point. And it really gave us a, a little bit more looseness in the dugout. You could really feel it go across the dugout. It made us feel a little bit better. How nice was it to bounce back the way that you all did after the loss yesterday? Uh, yesterday was a bad loss. You, you, there's no other way around it. And uh, we came out today. We played hard. Played good Mississippi State baseball, and we came out and got the win. So it was, it was really good for us, especially the confidence piece and getting back out there. How hard was uh, Lamonis on you guys after? He said that he, he got on you guys a little bit about the competitiveness and, and whatnot. What were those kind of conversations like between y'all and him? Um, I mean, he definitely got on us after the game, but uh, it's baseball. There's a new day tomorrow. So we came out here today. We, we flushed out with Nellie Tola, and we come out here and play a new game. and. We played well today, so we just got to keep that going. What did you like receiving from uh, Preston Johnson today? What did you like about his game? Uh, he was he was in the zone consistently. He was mixing pitches very well. He was throwing both breaking balls for a strike, change up for a strike. He was commanding the fastball. Once you can do that, you just keep hitters off the fastball. It's a lot it's a lot easier to pitch, and uh, he, he really kept him off balance all day, and it was really nice. Lamotis talked about your own struggles hitting the fastball. What changed today with that? Um, I think we all changed our mindset as a group. We were a little tentative yesterday. We didn't, we didn't really attack the fastball today. Our, our whole plan was to attack the fastball and be on time and, and not let those balls that are middle of the way we think are off just go. We're, we're going to take a good swing at that and try to put a good swing on it. Do you think Preston um, has potential to be a, a weekend starter for this team, like for the rest of the season, SEC play, even postseason play? For sure. I mean, if he pitches like that, if, he, if he's going to mix his pitches really well, that's – that's a huge thing in the SEC. If you can mix pitches and command all four of your pitches and, and keep hitters off balance, it's a it's a recipe for success anywhere. So, I mean, if he does that, I think he has a really good shot. A couple days ago, Chris was mentioning how, or I guess it was last week now at this point, how, you know, obviously lineup's not set yet, rotation's not set. And while he's kind of trying to work in weekend starters or also midweek guys, I mean, what's that like for you when, you know, these pitchers kind of aren't established? Is that kind of harder for you? Uh, no, I have confidence in all those guys. I mean, they came here for a reason. They're, they're all good. They just have to have confidence in themselves and, and try to throw strikes and be in the zone and be competitive. If they're competitive, it's, it's going to be a lot better for them. And I think that uh, it helps everybody out. Chris, what were you trying to do maybe as a catcher when, when there's a guy like yesterday we had Cam Teller struggling a little bit with, with fighting the zone? I mean, what are you trying to tell them behind the plate to kind of get them going a bit, maybe get that confidence up? Um, you're just trying to instill a little bit of confidence in them. You're trying to tell them, hey, you're good. Just just be you. Um, try, don't try to do too much. Some guys get up there and they try to do too much, and it, it kind of it hinders what they're actually able to do. And I know Cam Teller is really good. He, he was really good all fall, all spring. He's been really good. So these last two outings aren't him. But, I mean, he's going to come back and he's going to bounce back and he's going to be really strong. And I think, I think just having some confidence in himself is really going to help that. What's it like playing with Matt Quarter in his first year uh, he's really good. He uh, he didn't really play, he didn't play this fall. He had the the shoulder surgery, but ever since this spring, he's he's been hitting. He's been hitting well. He plays a, a good defensive center field. Yeah, I think he play all three positions in outfield, which is good to have that versatility. And uh, he doesn't get cheated at the plate, which is good. And uh, I really like his approach and the way he swings the bat. Pico came in there after Preston left out after some solid innings. What do you as a catcher really like about Pico in his first year here? He competes in the zone. He he gets after it, and he's not afraid to attack hitters, and he wants to get ahead, and he gets ahead early, and he, he works both of his pitches in there, and he just he gets guys out. I mean, he's not pitching to strike anybody out. He's not pitching to, to give up a homer. He's just pitching to get weak contact, and he got a lot of weak contact today, which is really good. Yes, Preston, what, what was working for you today out on the mound? Uh, really, I felt like it was a good day. You know, uh, anytime you have all your pitches working, or, you know, at least the shapes are good. Um, gives you a little bit of confidence booster to go out there and compete. So. What was it kind of like this morning or maybe just this week kind of preparing for, for your first start? Uh, I thought I was going to throw up this morning. Uh, yeah. It was, it was pretty nerve wracking, you know. Coming out of the bullpen, as you know, you have adrenaline and everything, but, you know, as you're starting, you know, you know what to expect and uh, you know that it's coming. So you're kind of a little antsy. So uh, once I got on the mound, it kind of cooled down. So. I know. Did the tell you you were going to be starting? I think, I think it was Wednesday. Okay. Uh, he texted me. It was like, you got a pen? No, he told me Tuesday. Uh, he said pen Wednesday, start Saturday. Yeah. What was your reaction when? You I was pretty happy. Uh, you know, I called my family and you know let them have the news. So it's it a little bit of celebration, you know, because I've been 
you know, waiting on this and preparing for it. So it was nice to get an opportunity. In the second inning, you allowed a home run, then you allowed a double. How do you battle up, battle out of that situation and then just stay great the rest of the game? Uh, it was kind of, you know, I think I lost a little focus, you know, right there in those two back-to-back -back hits. Uh, you know, the home run, he, he battled me. You know, I think he had like a six or seven pitch at bat. Uh, and I just, I missed over the plate with fastball. He got me. Uh, the next pitch was a slider to the righty, and he just, you know, he got, got a double. So, you know, it happens, you know, D1, you know, at this level. You know, you're going to get hit around a little bit. So it's just, you know, just saying, you know, forget it and move on. Next pitch. Short. Sure. Sal came out to the yeah. mound during that, that after the double. What did he say to you, and did that help you calm down? Uh, just to make an adjustment. He said, you know, uh, slow down, breathe, take a moment, uh, and get back in the zone. Uh, thereafter, you left after your inning. Pico Khan came in and pitched some solid uh, scoreless ball. What's it like there, or what's the benefit going forward of just having two guys out there to run all nine today? Uh, I mean, it definitely is, you know, a saver for the bullpen. You know, now we have a lot more guys for the tomorrow that we didn't or mm -hmm. wouldn't have. Uh, but it's nice to know that, you know, you have people behind you that come in and do the same job that you just did. Just talk about getting a win in general and bouncing back from yesterday. Uh, you know, it was nice to get a win, you know, not just personally, but just for the team. You know, that's what we kind of needed in the, um, in the clubhouse. You know, we were texting the group message last night, and, you know, just saying, you know, we got to come together as a team. Uh, we're not playing like a team. We're playing, you know, for, I, I think uh, what, what I used in my message was just to play for the, uh, the name of, and on your chest and not on your back. Uh, I think we did that today. We came together. Um, and it was just nice to get a little rally and, you know, a little confidence booster for the team. What do you think you're going to have to do to kind of continue to earn a weekend starting spot for this team through SEC play and beyond? Uh, just working hard, you know, and, the, you know, I think that today was kind of a show and that, you know, I, I do have what it takes, but, you know, like I've been saying for the last two years, you know, there's 10 guys on the team that can do it. Uh, and, you know, we all had the confidence that, you know, the next guy can do it. So it's kind of just, you know, staying even kill, not getting too ramped up and not staying too low. Um, and just compete. How important is that? I know yesterday, you know, Lamona said that he was embarrassed just, you know, in terms of the competitive level from the team. I mean, to have veteran guys like Logan and, and Brad kind of step up today and, and be the leaders, I mean, is, is that something you guys kind of expect that, that doesn't need to go set is, is a veteran, veteran guys like that stepping up when you need it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it goes back to this question of uh, playing for your name on your chest. Uh, we just, I think today we came together and we were like, you know, it's just a ball game. Go out there, compete, play. And of course, the veterans, you know, they're going to do what they do best and just have success. He played at Hines with Matt Porter. What's it like playing with him there and out here? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, you know, I played with Matt um, at Hines for a year. Got to see him grow up a little bit, um, you know, and I knew he was something special. Um, and getting the call and, you know, the information uh, that he was coming here was, you know, kind of cool. Um, and then Brooks Alger is also a Hines guy, you know, getting to play beside him and, uh, you know, just. Getting to reminisce in the Heinz days and the you know the memories from there was just it's a it's awesome. Through 89 pitches, how's your arm feeling right now? I actually don't feel that tired. Oh. Uh, I felt a little tired, like winded uh, that last inning, but my arm never really uh, felt tired. So which is kind of weird, but it's pretty good. You think it's like kind of a good sign for you the fact that you were able to go kind of so late? I understand they took you out just because it's early in the year, wait for you to get fully stretched or whatever, but. You know, the fact that you still had your stuff that late in the game, like, does that kind of give you some momentum internally? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I've always known that, you know, I've always been a starter. So knowing that I can go six, seven innings is always in the back of my mind. And, you know, that's one thing Lim said. He said, I know you can get the guy out, but pitch count is early. Good job. So, Preston, as a reliever, you don't usually go as far into games. Uh, facing a hitter a second or a third time, do you approach that hitter any differently? Um, you know, a little bit, but you got to kind of prepare in the first the first go around, uh, not showing him, you know, everything, you know, try to get out, you know, with just one or two pitches and then, you know, start introducing the, the, th the third and the fourth pitch as the game goes on and just keep them on their toes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.